Okay, so if we have an equation and we want to solve for a particular variable, first thing we need to do is identify the variable we're solving for. And then remember, an equation means the left and the right side are the same thing. So as long as we do the same operation to both sides, it will still be, uh, it will still be equal, it will still be true. And so if we repeatedly do that same operation to both sides until our variable is isolated, we've solved it for that particular variable. How do we isolate our variable? Where well, we are going to use inverse operations to move other variables to the other side or to move our variable to the other side. Inverse operations. Um, and we, we kind of have to remember our order of operations, PEMDAS, parentheses first, then exponents, then multiplication and division together, then addition and subtraction together. Um, but since since we're solving, we're not, we're not performing the um, the operations, we, we're kind of going to go in reverse order in general when we're solving as a rule of thumb. Um, and there's some other things that might come up like combining like terms. If there's two or if the variable is in two terms, we need to combine that into to one term to solve for it. There are different ways of solving quadratics, which you know from algebra, and we know there are different ways of solving systems of equations. This is just general solving one variable in an equation. Let's take a look at some examples that you might see in physics. Uh, ek bar is equal to 3 halves kb times t. Let's solve for t. Uh, well, t is, uh, t is being multiplied by 3 halves and by kb, so we need to do the inverse operation to isolate t. So we're going to divide both sides by 3 halves kb. 3 halves kb on both sides. Put that in parentheses so we know we're doing the same thing to both sides, and we can see that we cancel out over here and we're left with T is equal to kinetic energy over, EK, that's EK bar, over 3 halves KB. And we've solved it. We can simplify that out a little bit if we want, but that's essentially solved. How about over here? Let's solve for R. So this is a little bit more complicated. If we want to isolate R, we need to get rid of Q1, Q2, and K. Um, so how do we get rid of Q1 and two, Q2? Well, they're in the numerator, so we need, to, um, we need to cancel them out by dividing. They're multiplied, so we need to divide or multiply by them in the denominator. So Q1 and Q2 in the denominator. And we also need to cancel K, which is also in the numerator. I'm running out of space. Um, so we're going to divide out by K as well on both sides. So we're actually multiplying by 1 over q1, q2, and 1 over k. We need to do that to both sides. So that's the same as f over k, q1, q2. Same thing to both sides. Even though the order looks a little bit different, it's actually the same. Let's cancel carefully. k over k, q1, q2 over q1, q2. That leaves us with f over k, q1, q2 is equal to, and this is where students mess up. It's not equal to r squared because r squared is in the denominator. Um, so let's write it out as it actually is, 1 over r squared. If we want r squared in the numerator, we, we need to take the reciprocal of both sides, aka raised to the negative 1 power. So we'll just flip the numerator and denominator of both sides. We get k, q1, q2 over f is equal to r squared. And then we're left with r squared, but we want r, so we need to take the square root of both sides or raise to the 1 half power. I'm going to raise to the 1 half power. 1 half power. 1 half power. 1 half power is the same as a square root. So the 1 half and the square cancel out, and we're left with, on the left side, k, q1, q2, over f equals just r. And we've solved it. A little bit messy, but there it is. We've solved for r. How about this one? This is uh, slightly different. There's a mix of addition and subtraction. Let's solve for little r. This is epsilon equals i times quantity big R plus little r. Um, well, little r is inside of these parentheses, and so we're, we're going to have to isolate this whole parentheses term first before we can solve for uh, little r. So let's isolate this whole term by canceling out i. We need to divide both sides by i. Divide by i divided by i, and we're left with epsilon divided by i is equal to big R plus little r. Uh, now we can get little r on its own. It's being added to big R, so we just need to get rid of big R by subtracting big R. So minus big R on both sides, minus big R. 
We need to do it to the whole of both sides. So let's just put this in parentheses, make sure everything works out. It's gonna cancel over here. And we're gonna be left with this quantity epsilon over i, that whole thing minus r. We can't subtract it just from the top or the bottom. It's that whole quantity minus r equals little r. And we've solved for little r. How about this one? Let's solve for theta 2. Now this is a little bit more interesting. We have sine of theta 2 over theta 1 is v2 over v1. Um, but sine of theta 2 is actually a function, and theta 2 is the argument of the function. So let's just get started solving for sine theta 2, and then we can, then we can deal with the sine. So uh, to cancel out the sine theta 1, since it's being divided, let's multiply sine theta 1 on both sides, sine theta 1 cancels on this side, we're left with sine theta 2 is equal to v2 over v1 times sine theta 1. Um, now we can't just divide out by sine theta 2 because sine isn't like, sine isn't a variable. Sine is a function where theta 2 is the input. And how do we undo a function? Well, we have to use the inverse function. Um, maybe you've learned about this before. The inverse function of sine is actually the arc sine or the inverse sine. Um, and so we just write it as sine to the minus 1 or arc sine. I'm going to write it as arc sine. So let's take the arc sine of both sides. Arc sine of sine of theta uh, 2 is equal to arc sine of v2 over v1 sine of theta 1. Arc sine of that whole quantity. Remember, we're doing it to the whole, um, to the whole side. Since this is the inverse function of the function, it cancels out and we're just left with the argument theta 2. And so we've solved it. Theta 2 equals arc sine of v2 over v1 sine of theta 1. Um, OK. Uh, so just be careful about that if your function is in a, a normal function. And then this last one here, we have. Um, just a little bit more complicated, maybe a little bit more fun to solve. We're just going to solve for c here. Um, this is gamma is 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. This is a good test of your algebra skills solving for c. Um, it'll take a few steps to solve. So first things first, I want to um, I want to undo, well, there's a couple of things I can do first. How about let's get this um, this whole radical in the numerator by flipping both sides. Then we get 1 over gamma is equal to the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. That's v squared, not v2, v squared over c squared. OK, so now I want to undo this square root. So I got to square both sides. Square both sides, square both sides. And I'm left with, well, 1 squared is just 1. So that stays 1. Gamma squared is gamma squared. And the right side becomes, well, square root of a square. It's just 1 minus v squared over c squared. OK, now I want to isolate this v squared over c squared term. So I'm actually going to, since it's negative, I'm going to move it to the other side. Let's do that in a different color. I'm going to move this to this side. Ooh, space. Um, I'm going to move this to this side, and I'm going to move this to that side by doing the inverse function. In this case, it's going to be adding or subtracting. Um, and so uh, when I add v squared over c squared to both sides, plus v squared over c squared, I'm going to subtract 1 over gamma squared um, from both sides, minus 1 over gamma squared plus v squared over c squared. That's going to cancel. That's going to cancel, and we're going to be left with v squared over c squared is equal to, well, we have 1 um, and then minus 1 over gamma squared. OK, we are almost there. We have c squared. It's almost on its own. Let's scroll down just a little bit. Um, let's get rid of this v squared by dividing both sides by v squared divided by v squared. Remember, we've got to divide the whole thing by v squared, so just divide by v squared. Looks a little messy. Maybe we can simplify it, maybe not, but I'm not going to worry about that. It's still correct. 
and we have 1 over c squared equals 1 minus 1 over gamma squared over v squared. Um, so if I want c in the numerator, I've got to take the reciprocal of both sides. It becomes c squared is equal to, well, flip this one, we get v squared divided by 1 minus 1 over gamma squared, that whole quantity in the denominator there. And then all I have to do is take the square root of both sides to cancel out the square. But i got to take the square root of the whole thing. If I simplify that out, it becomes c is equal to, well, the square root of v squared is just v. And the denominator, there's no easy way to simplify that. You can't just simplify the square root of a, um, of a difference. So that's just going to stay as 1 minus 1 over gamma squared. So there's some examples solving algebraic problems.